The devil live in my town. So listen the fuck up. It almost sounds like Krusty the fucking clown. I love it. That was a bit. <laughs> that was creepy. Right, this is something good, huh? We got something going on here. This is a special. Our Halloween special. A Halloween special. It's spooky. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like we're going to get a lot of booze. <laughs> yeah, like our normal. <laughs> like normally. That's the only thing that's not special. I'm super excited about today. I like almost say I've got a grin. Like, we have such an exciting show today. Funny. I love that, you know. This is a new show, but we're doing a... We have a Halloween special. That's kind of cool. And a big guest. Big guest. Big guest. Legendary. Mitch Markowitz from the the co-creator of the Hilarious House of Frightenstein, which is the longest running children's program in Canada. Mitch fucking Markowitz. Mitch fucking Markowitz. Yeah, the The super super hippie. hippie. Hi, oh, silver away. Wrong. Yeah. We, he's on the show today. He's going to be on show. Here, in-house. That's right. Very small price. Yeah, no problem. It's a Canadian icon and a big cult following. Huge cult following, yeah. Like, like we, he uh, influenced Michael Myers and says he influenced, was influenced by him. Jim Carrey was Jim influenced. Carrey. Um, this whole show. Many many young Canadian comics, it's kind of shaped and molded their comedy. Mm. And uh, we owe that to, like, a lot of that great comedic talent was uh, inspired by Mitch Markowitz, who's going to be on the show. Did yeah, I mention? That whole show? Yeah, you did. Yeah, so I'm excited to talk to him. He's going to be on in a bit. Um, what else we got? We got... Um, well, it's a Halloween special. It's a Halloween special, so we're let's, doing lots of spooky shit. Uh, let's go with the... Obviously, what do you, we're wearing different gear. Yeah, you dressed up today. I'm... Uh, give you one hint. Whip it. Whip it good. Devo. Devo. I mean, obviously, the oversized hat. I'm overselling it with this one. I think it's it like is a cool one. look. Do you think that they made those hats just for Devo? Like Devo invented that hat? I think they did. I think there's, there's no a one trademark else on that. No. This one's not official. This one's definitely not official because <laughs> it's, it's not even regular. It's a Fugazi. Size. Yeah. <laughs> yes. It's like the Chinese I got two, knockoff. Two for one. Yeah. That's great. It's a good costume. I got the guitar. I'm yeah. selling it a bit. I might take it off the guitar in a bit. It's I feel like they had keyboard guitars though. They might have. Were they called those keytars? <laughs> Something. And you're, uh, uh... I'm me. This is just, I just decided yeah. to wear a robe today. Relax, dude. No, I'm, I, whatever. I tried to do, I wanted to do TJ Mackey, Frank TJ Mackey from Magnolia. Yeah. Respect the cock. Yeah. And I don't know, I thought I could pull it off and I thought I'd, I thought I could uh, just do my hair up and it would be an easy t- costume. Respect the cock. And tame the cunt. But it just looked like me, kind of. Yeah. So uh, I'm like I'm I like mean, you fra- could be I'm, multiple multiple things. Yeah, I'm like I'm Frank T J Mackey at the spa. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> he take uh, you know he's that uh, kind of guy. Well, you dressed up, you tried. Respect That's the cock, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> That's all that counts. You tried. Had a fake, like you are a nice and caring person. That's good. Uh, yeah. What's that? I, I haven't had a sip yet. What is this? Good. What are we it's drinking? From Bench Bench Brewing Company. It's the uh, Balls Falls Session IPA. That's good. Ooh. Not bad. That's very tasty. That's mm-hmm. really good. Nice, good hoppy taste to it. Balls which I Falls. Like. So, do they get the like the water from it from Balls Falls? Is that why I'm going to assume so. I'd have to read the can, which I'm not going to do right now, but uh, I'm going to assume crafted so. Crafted in the escarpment. Well, it's crafted in the escarpment. There you go. Possible that they get the water. I know. They got some good beers down the there. River. That's what I know. I know they got some good beers. It's an excellent beer. This one's really good. This is one of my favorite ones, the Session IPA. Mm. Anyways, so, that's a session. Um, yeah. What's, do you know anything about beer? Do you know any? What is a session IPA? I know I like to drink it. I think that's like almost like seasonal, almost oh. like a seasonal thing. I could be wrong though. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe instead of saying seasonal, they say session. Yeah, or maybe it has something to do with the time that it takes to brew it, so it's mm. like a session. I yeah. have no idea. Yeah. So we got Mitch Markowitz coming up on the show. Big guest. Big guest. We've got me and Mike made a prank call. Prank calls. We got a prank call. We get a we called a, a stag shop. Yeah, we'll play that later <laughs> on the show. And uh, we've got, we're calling a gypsy. We're calling like a fortune teller. A psychic. A psychic. A psychic. Yeah. I don't want to go too long with that, though, because I don't want the price of these these gypsies. Yeah, it's a little, I've never called one before. I've never, I don't know what to expect. Uh, we, well, we picked the lowest end one in the book. Because 
<laughs> she's, I don't know, but she comes highly regarded. She comes highly recommended. Yeah, for the guys willing to pay that. Uh, we wanted to see our top five Halloween movies that you like to watch during this season of time of year. My top five and your top five. Yeah, you're going to guess mine. I'm going to guess yours and then we reveal. Is that the idea? I guess. Yeah, I, I have a. I feel like I got a good beat on what you like to watch What your f- okay. top five. You want to do that right are. now? You want to get, in, get into that? You want to get into it? I know you've been anxious. Or you want to do the phone calls? You've been trying to get information about this from me for the whole week to guess my top five and you're like i don't know well, I you think kind of spilled be this. a little bit on the one. Oh, well yeah, i sent mike my notes by accident and i read it started you reading read the, it you read yeah you started reading it and i told you stop 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 because i had the my list on it the list has changed a bit that's fine. just a little just a little but we'll still we'll still we'll, we'll i think and i, I have think, some theories because i did you did hint at about a stephen king movie which i have a theory on mm-hmm. and uh, i got some more theories on the other ones on the, okay, all right. We'll, we'll, many. We'll do talk. you want me to just guess your list now? Or you want you to do, the do the lists now? Okay, we could do the list now. What was the other thing you want to do? Phone calls? Phone calls. You Let's do the prank calls first. We'll break it up. We'll do prank calls. Oh, okay, the prank calls. Let's call. do the prank calls. You want to do the prank calls first? Prank calls first, and then we'll get into the movies after that. Okay. Let's listen to this one. So do you want to start with the the one that you did, or do you want to just Anyone. play the one? Play I, just, I just think we should play the one that, that was nice, that we liked. Yeah, let's see how it goes. Let's see okay. how it goes. Let's Pause hear it. it. Listen. Let's hear it. Let's this hear it. Okay, me and Mike called a stag shop, and this is how it went. Stag shop on. Can I help you? Hey, hello, hello. This is. Um, I'm calling. I'm. I'm looking for some supplies for. I'm, I'm having this gangster style Halloween sex party with a bunch of people, lots of people, <laughs> and I need uh, some supplies. I wonder if you have some stuff. Okay. Okay, so like we know we want spooky sex stuff. So I'm looking for like do you have like severed cock or maybe no no, like, no severed cock? No. What about like, like a no. severed head that'll like suck a cock? No. Uh, what about limbs like like arms? Like my I think my Yanni Yanni you want the the long the length full length arm, right? Yes, full length. Full length. Do you want the from the fist to the shoulder? Yes. <laughs> If you're looking for a spirit Halloween, I suggest you call a spirit, spirit Halloween. Spirit Halloween. We like don't they, dabble they in shit. that sort of stuff. What dabble? Okay. <laughs> I mean, what do you sell there? Do you have sex, Everything. You have sex stuff, but you don't have severed limbs. <laughs> Correct. He's I don't just understand. Not it. You, how do I get like yeah. uh, severed body parts? Like, he stuck with it that, though. We yeah. can fuck, or they fuck it's us. Good, good employee. I am not sure. No shortage of vibrators, dick pumps, cock rings, underwear. <laughs> Bondage, lingerie, flashlights, lubricants, massage wow. oils. Damn right. That sounds nice. Uh, I mean, <laughs> that sounds I got nice. all sorts of options. <laughs> Lots of options. I like this. Okay, this is sounding really good, Peppy. <laughs> I I think we come by, and uh, do you have like big big uh, storage bins I could just load up a bunch of shit in? <laughs> no, I suggest you bring your own. I gotta bring my like a. Can I bring like a like a wheelbarrow? <laughs> I almost lost it. I mean, you can bring whatever you want. Yeah, like I said, if you're looking for a Spirit Halloween, I suggest you call Spirit Halloween. Spirit Halloween, okay. I like, I have got lots of spirit, you know? I want to (laughs) spread it all around. Sounds good, man. Okay, you take care, okay, Peppy? You too. Okay, bye-bye. Peppy, I Bye. think you were good. Bye-bye. Peppy wasn't that responsive, but his negative attitude that he stuck with the call even. That's good customer service. My my I'm Russian my, my Russian accent turned into like the Count Dracula or something. <laughs> Perfect. It kind of turns into like Dracula. Yeah. <laughs> um That was good. That I wasn't mean it bad. was entertaining. It's just that like we weren't getting much feedback from the guy. Yeah, it's kind of hard. I don't yeah. know. I bet you the stag shops are getting are kind of used to people well, prank calling. Well, we did the several calls, and like a lot of them would just put us on hold. They're like they would kind of tell. I think that's and the then move. Put us. That's the that's the money move. Yeah, it's oh, like yeah here, and then leave you on hold for and a leave long, you on, yeah, for however long because until you hang up. Because if you're not a prank call, then they're gonna be like, "Why'd you hang up on me?" Yeah, you, you know? would call back and say, "Why'd you hang? Why'd up you on hang me? up on me?" Right? Yeah. Yeah. Why'd you do that? Yeah. But but if you just put them on hold, it's like you, you kind of yeah. neutralize the situation. Just kept calling back. Okay, let's play your call. Now that we're getting into it, might as well just play them all. Let's see what's funny, what's what. Okay. They're not long. No. You know, no. Well, because they put it on hold after two seconds. Thanks, up on church. How can I help you? Yes. Hi. How are you today? I'm good. How are you? I sound like good. The I'm too. having a sex Halloween adult party. <laughs> Do you have mm-hmm. stuff that uh, you know could help me with this for like protection and uh, you know some like uh, spooky sexual stuff? <laughs> 
<laughs> so we have costumes. There's fetish wear. And they all play yeah, so there's serious. a lot of things. If you want to see well, what they, we have, you can always job. go to our it's website. And there'll be the categories I, there, so you actually have a visual. I actually don't have access to internet right now. How about the feet? Do they have severed feet? Oh, yes. My friend has foot fetish. Does uh, you guys have severed feet with, like, holes in it? No. I no? No. Do you have uh, severed no. cocks or anything with, like, blood dripping from it? No. No? Do you, you have any suggestions? You would have or... to get creative and, you know, pay on it. Oh, so like I could get like a flashlight or something and put like blood creative. dripping from it, you're saying? Yeah, uh, that's pretty creative. Yeah. Do they have like red, <laughs> red, like, like the Sorry, loop? Can I just put you on hold for one time? Oh, sure. oh. Oh, and that's, that's that. All right. I think we get it. I hope the, the, the fans enjoyed these phony phone calls. We had a little bit of fun doing it. <laughs> it we was just fun. didn't I get had... the response we thought we were going to get. They weren't as fun. Honestly, I don't know if it was because. When I was a kid, I just found like stuff like this like way funnier. I don't know. Yeah. But when I would do these, I would do these all the time when I was young. I would do prank calls when I was with my yeah, friends all the time. What a punk. And we we have so <laughs> much fun. We had so much fun, and I make sure I do it at my friends' houses. So yeah, yeah. Wouldn't yeah. come back to haunt me because you were using a like a, a landline. <laughs> oh yeah, it was uh, everything was landline back then. <laughs> all right. Well, I mean, hopefully we enjoyed that. I enjoyed doing it. It was kind of funny. Whatever. Fuck it. We tried. <laughs> it was okay. Severed Cox is still funny. I don't give a shit. Yeah, chance. I think that's funny just because, like, that's exactly what they sell. The severed Cox. <laughs> and they're like, no. No, we don't have those. <laughs> that's hilarious. Yeah, I think that's funny. Anyways, what do you want to do, X? You want to do the movies? Okay, we're going to get the movie list going. Yeah, okay. You want to do mine first? Do you want me to do Do you do want yours? me to guess yours? Sure. You want me to guess yours? Sure. Go ahead. Okay. I, I've got it here on my phone, and I All will right. show you my confirmation after. Okay, I got it right here in front of me, too. Beautiful. Let's go. So what we're doing here, let's explain to the fans again. Yeah. We're going to guess each other's top, since we're it's a Halloween special, we're going to guess each other's top five movies to watch during this time of Halloween. Mm-hmm. Um, he's going to guess mine. I'm going to guess his. We're going to show it. Yeah. And so, we're going to go from there. Let's go one for one. Okay. My first pick yeah. for your Chris No particular Halloween order. Movie. And I, and top I, five. And I know, I know this is one of your daughter's favorite movies. And I know it's one of yours, and I don't think you can leave Tim Burton off this list with you. So my first choice was Nightmare Before Christmas. And that's exactly what I'll do. <laughs> um, no, that's not on your list. Not to watch during this time of the season. Wow. We I'm, watch. I'm going to tell you why, because we watch it all year round. Okay. Well, it's like an all year round movie. It's, yeah. It's a Christmas movie as well as a Halloween movie. Well, he's confirmed that it's a Halloween movie because it's a Halloween characters that want to be Christmas. So it makes right. it a Halloween movie. But you can watch it for both seasons because it's a great film. Uh, that is, I did debate putting that on there, just letting you know. I know you did. I know you but must have. It, it didn't make it because there are movies that I want to watch. It's my list, not my family list. Okay, it's your list. I know, okay. but uh, but yeah, I, 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 I would have put that. I do love that movie. You're right. I know you love that, but movie. but it's not on my top five. Okay, okay, okay. So now you you. Uh, how about you do the next one and then we'll go back and forth. Okay. Well, you you kind of spilled the beans on one, so I'm gonna go with high tension right off the hop. That is on my list. And it's an excellent film. You sunk my battleship. Well, you kind of sent it by accident, so that kind of yeah, poof, you knew that one. That was a write-off. Okay, so now we got that's that, an, which that's is an, an excellent, excellent film. film. Excellent I agree. Film. Would have made my list for best horror films. I think it's like a Swedish movie or so uh, Finnish. German. I don't know. Movies. Hot tension. Yeah, it might be German. Yeah, excellent movie. Sense. If you've never right. seen it, great plot twist at the end. Don't want to reveal too much, but it's f- fucking awesome movie. Awesome movie. Your turn. Um, my next one is Evil Dead 2. Groovy. Hello, lover. Yes, Evil Dead 2 is on my list. And I, and you know what? I was specific about Evil Dead 2, not Evil Dead 1. Correct, because when you said, when you kind of were hinting at it, when we were trying to get at me, you were like, Evil Dead, and I'm like, no. It's not on my list, but Evil but Dead I, 2 is. Evil Dead 2 is, 100%. Evil so Dead mother. 2 is on a lot of people's list. It's excellent. It's better than it's better than uh, Evil Dead 1. Evil Dead 1 is still a good film. Excellent. But it's almost the same idea, the second one. Uh, the second one just made, it was just better. It was like a better version of Evil Dead 1. Correct. Um, mm, okay, your turn. I guess. Now, I'm going to come in with, because you gave a That's the only one I, you're going to get, I think. Stephen King. Okay. You, I'm going to assume Carrie. 
You have a date with Carrie. And I have a reason behind that. Okay. So I think it was grade six. We had a sleepover and you took us, your mom took us to whatever that uh, convenience store is on the corner and you picked Carrie right. as the movie to watch. And I remember all you fucking guys fell asleep and I was the only one standing only one up watch. watching it. Yeah. Because it was my first time seeing it. And it's a great movie. It's excellent. Brian and De Palma. you picked it because you said it was, you love that movie. Well, it's an excellent movie. And, and Carrie, Carrie was Here's on my, my question. What? It's is not it on the list. No. No. What other Stephen King movie do you have on there? I'm not going to tell you before you guess the list, idiot. Well, I got a couple more. I know. Okay. You got a couple more okay, guesses. Well, you yeah. got three more guesses. Yeah. Um, but yes, uh, that was a kind of a tradition when, when we were young, my, I was, I was a big fan of like Stephen King horror movies and like, and getting them during the sleepovers. It was so much fun. One of the, one of the sleepovers we did, I, I remember, I think you were there. We watched Pet Cemetery. That was the first time you watched Pet Cemetery, I think too. Uh, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. But that's it. That, dude, I don't remember getting carried, but now I do. I yeah, remember it. I remember sleepovers it. in the basement. Said, oh, I love this movie. Yeah. I actually watched that one up in your living room and we all slept in sleeping bags in the living room with that 52 inch, like old school, would you roll in? Car Carrie's a brilliant film. Brian De Palma it's directed excellent. it. Do you know that movie, if you watch it back, you're like, man, I can't believe, why did they hate her so much? They were so mean to Drug her. Drug it up. Plug it. Yeah, up. it was like yeah, she. It was, it was like it was like she was a Trump supporter who wouldn't wear a mask. <laughs> that's funny. You know, <laughs> that's what they treated her. No! Yeah. yeah, we're gonna dump some blood on this Trump supporting bitch. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny right Good movie. that's a great movie but that's not on my list your guess my next guess this is a this is a wild card I don't know I have a feeling that for some reason you're a Chucky fan and Child's Play was my third choice hi I'm Chucky wanna play I do like Chucky but no it's not, not on, on your list, list. not but on my list I do love the original Chucky it's great didn't you go as Ch didn't you go as Chucky no. I no. Didn't you had a picture of didn't your daughter look like Chucky when you were My you know, nephew dressed Oh There's a picture yeah. of you uh, It's on my phone. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. You know what we should post that. <laughs> I don't know if I'll have my daughter on here. No, no, no. There's a photo of her that looks she just looks like, like Chucky. Like and the she's Chucky not doll. meaning to do it, correct. Right. Yeah, that's hilarious. So no, that's not uh, okay. No. All right. So you're I'm I got one, you got one. Okay. My next guess is Okay, so I would think because since you're a student of film, uh -huh. I tried to dial it back because your film knowledge is way wider than mine. So I started thinking of movies like House on Haunted Hill, Dementia 13, and then I came upon Night of the Living Dead. They're coming to get you, Barbara. Stop it. You're ignorant. They're coming for you, Barbara. Wow. Romero's original yeah. Night of the Living Dead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's on my list. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing you got that. thank you thank you that's because amazing you got that, that would normally make my list but i, I i'm more of a traditionalist i love, I love that, that movie i love that movie i remember watching that on ifc that's crazy that in the 90s that, by the way. and it was like to me it it, it it was one of those films that really it, it spurred on my passion for making films because it's such a good independent film if you haven't seen it's it, so brilliant watch it. it's excellent you it's should watch excellent. it excellent watch it it's, it's awesome. so it's so good for the amount of like especially hey. since it was a I got two now. You got two, buddy. Okay, I think I'm going to get the next one, though. Okay, go ahead. But I was going to say, especially when you consider how much money and money that movie costs to make, how inventive, creative, how how long it stay, stayed the test of time, Texas. Romero is underrated. It. It's awesome. Excellent. That's an excellent classic movie. If you don't, if you don't, uh, if you don't watch it this Halloween, you're a fool. You're a cinematic fool. Cinematic moron. Um, my next choice is Halloween. What was living behind that boy's eyes was purely and simply evil. Ding, ding, ding. Yes. Yes. Excellent. Mark. Two for... I got two. I got, got two. two. You got two. I got two. Deuce. Deuce. Okay. Deuce. Your goal was to get three. I don't think you're going to get it, but... Okay, so Halloween. Halloween. That's a great choice. John excellent. Carpenter, excellent filmmaker. Um, that was very close to being on my list as well. 
because I think Carpenter is just a genius. Well, it's just so synonymous with this time of season too, right? So now it's my go. It's your turn. Okay, so now I'm going to go with, because I know you love Kubrick, I'm going to go with The Shining. Here's Johnny. You got it. Oh my God, I got three. I hit my goal. You know what though? This is this is this that was on my list prior to when you saw it though. I just feel like you saw this list. Buddy, I just pulled Night of the Living Dead yeah, out of my was ass. Good. That was good. And now I got The Shining. The, you know what though? Carrie was on my list prior to you guessing it too, though. But and I you didn't know Carrie. that you uh, guessed Night of the Living Dead. Give Carrie me was on my break. list before. You gave me a hint on a Stephen King film though. Yeah. Well, that's that's uh, that's the one. That's the Stephen King movie, The Shining. Is that really written by Stephen King? Yeah. Holy fuck. I honestly didn't know that. You didn't know The Shining is a Stephen King novel? <laughs> I guess not. Yeah, buddy. Hmm. You know, and... Uh, Good on him. <laughs> that is uh, not just one of the best Halloween movies ever made. It's re- legitimately one of the best films made. Uh, the, 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 everything about that movie is brilliant. Kubrick's The Shining is a, a work of art. There's so you many can watch weird, that all year round. There's so many weird little Easter eggs. You could watch that movie a hundred times and not no, get all the in, in details. That's like a lot of his films. There's this brilliant thing that there's a there's a movie about it. I think it's called Room Two Three Seven. There's a there's a room in The Shining in the hotel in the Overlook Hotel that's impossible. It's got a window, but it ta- it's in the middle of the hotel. And so you're like, but as an audience, you don't think about that. You're like, oh, it's in the middle of the hotel. Well, how does it have this window? But Maybe the as a but but it's peculiar enough that you're you're off put by it as an audience member. You don't realize it when you're watching the film, but there there's an there's an unsettling feeling you get from that scene, and that might be why because it's an impossible window. It's an impossible room. Yeah, it's great. I don't know. There's stuff like that that the little touches, little details that Kubrick does. I just think that movie is genius, brilliant. Your guess. All right, my last guess is, is your last guess? it's the yeah. last one. My next one's the last one. Let's go. Give it to me. Leprechaun. Is that me gold? What the hell are you? No, I don't think that's a Halloween movie at all, but I do love that movie. I watched that on St. Patrick's Day. Leprechaun's not a Halloween movie? I guess it is. Not for me. I watch it on St. Patrick's Day. That's hilarious. (laughs) I just know you're like, you love the Leprechaun movie. I know you love that movie. I do love that movie, but I I watch it on St. Patrick's Day. (laughs) Motherfucker. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's hilarious. I do like that movie. All the movies you mentioned, I do like, by the way. Yeah, I know you do. <laughs> I do. Uh, just wait till I hit you with my list. And you're okay. going to be like, wow, you're really a traditional Halloween movie watcher. Oh, okay. 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 All right. All right. All right. All right. Last my last, last guest, guest, Beetlejuice. What are your qualifications? Ah, well, I attended Juilliard. I'm a graduate of the Harvard Business School. I travel quite extensively. I lived through the Black Plague, and I had a pretty good time during that. I've seen The Exorcist about 167 times, and it keeps getting funnier every single time I see it. Nope. God damn it. You got three, though. That's pretty good. Well, the but one you, you gave to me. you fucking list. High I... tension you gave to me. Yeah, I gave you high tension. I feel like I gave you The Shining a little bit, too. But... I don't think you gave me The Shining. Okay, all right. So do you want, do you want to do your list, and I'll do my list? Uh... Or you want me to go down my list? Go, go, flip, okay. go. So you got hot t- high tension, which is actually known as hot tension. Yeah. And uh, George A. Romero's original Night of the Living Dead. Boom. And The Shining. Boom. Three. The ones you did not get. John Carpenter's The Thing. I just watched that recently. So good. Fucking amazing. Yeah. Love the thing. One of my favorite movies, period. Excellent. Um, and I got threw in a new one in there. Throw you off a little bit. Okay, what is it? Get out. Sorry, man. Okay. Get out! Yo! 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 Chill, man. Get out! Chill! Chill! Chill, chill, chill man! We got chill! Get the fuck out of here! That is good, too. Yeah. Excellent. Too new. Excellent movie. Too new, but very, excellent. Very excellent. good. Very good. Love that movie. Okay, now let's hear your list. Let's hear this mm. great list. Evil Dead 2 you got. I got that. Okay. And Halloween you got. I got, got, I got that, yeah. Okay. Nightmare on Elm Street. Please, God. This is God. Okay. Oh, wow. I did not predict that. Nightmare on Elm Buddy, Street. Buddy, don't you remember in high school I used to rant about how I loved that movie and I wanted, no. I wanted to make her watch, make us watch it in film studies and she wouldn't allow us to watch it? I don't remember that at all. Anyways, Nightmare on Elm Street. <laughs> The original, first one. Yes, of course. Okay. Friday the 13th. Innocent Jason. My only child. Jason. 
Whoa, Rob Jason! Yeah, the first one. The first one. I love Camp first Crystal one. Lake. Yeah, Camp he's Crystal not even. Lake. Jason's not really even in it. It's his mother. Yeah, it's great. That's a good movie. And The Exorcist. Keep away! The soul is mine. Fuck me! Fuck me! Exorcist is a very scary movie. Fuck me! <laughs> That's a pretty good impression. <laughs> You like that? Yeah. Fuck. What is it? What does what she say? say? Fuck me, Jesus. Does she say fuck? And then she doesn't she take the cross. Cross her right in her vagina. Ugh. Yeah. Ugh. Disgusting. That movie's fucked up. Yeah. Your mother sucks. Cock it out. <laughs> yeah. The game worked. I told fun. you it was. Yeah. It was fun. That was work. That was fun. That was nice. All right. Um, okay. So I, I guess so, we're gonna call the psychic now. The psychic. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Don't go away. <laughs> My name is Roshni. Okay, Roshni. Uh, Roshni, is this a gy- are you a gypsy, Roshni? No, I am not a gypsy. I am Indian. You're Indian. I'm from uh, India. Right. Yes. Uh, do you tell people's fortunes and futures? I can tell you whatever you'd like me to tell you. <laughs> but it will be very short and sweet. Okay, that's great. Great hey, right to the point. Um, <clears throat> so I'm here with my friend uh, Mike and... Uh, we want to know what our futures are. Well, can you can you can you tell us? Give us a reading. Can you give us a reading? Let me see. I'm sensing two energies. That's good. There is two energies. There. Genius. Yeah. I can feel it. Yeah, there's two of us. There's two of us here. Yeah. One is a little bit flat. 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 Or flat fat. Energy. A flat. Flat. Oh, flat. flat. Oh, flat energy. Okay. Yeah, okay. All As right. As opposed to round. Okay. And I want to know, what is your name? My name's Mike. You have long hair, Mike? Ooh. <laughs> I do, yeah. Is it getting a little blip gray? Mm, a little bit, a little bit. It's Come getting on. there. These are standard things. Yeah. Okay. I'm sensing a very good future for you. Ooh. What kind of future? Big, bright, shining star. I'm sensing you're going to have a lot of money. Oh, Ooh. I like money. But you need to have a giving heart. Oh, okay. Don't you? I, I think I, I think I do. But, <laughs> okay, okay. All right. All right, okay. I'll work, I'll work on that. I'll work on that. I'll work on that. I'm seeing, I'm seeing green waters. Green waters? Green waters Ooh. and green waters. Glistening in the, Tell glistening in the moonlight. Ah, that sounds nice. It's that's like a, a nice, that's a nice future. Very, I like that. Bright future. Probably all the green screens. Sun. You have a very bright future. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Okay, that's nice. Okay, and how about my co, my uh, my my friend here, Mike? How's, he's his, his name's Mike. Also, Mike. You, yeah. Do you see anything for him? I don't hear his voice. He sounded like a mouse. Here, here. Hey, hey, hang on, hang on, hang on one sec. Hello, hello. What is it, Roshana? Roshni. Roshni? But you have to say with R. Roshni. Okay, I got it. Roshni. So what do you yes. what, what do you got for me? What are you feeling? So you said flat. Who was flat? Was that you him? You're the flat one. You oh. are the flat. I feel it. You're flat. <laughs> it's better than being round, I'm gonna be honest with you. <laughs> mm, round always bouncing around. It's yeah. good. No. Oh, that's flat good. Is very dead. Very bad. Energy. Huh? Very dead energy. I see. Oh, interesting. Huh. Okay. Mm. Okay. What 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 what, like, what, like, what do you mean bad energy? How? No, not bad. It's not bad and it's not good. <laughs> like what? Dark? It's like a gray area, like gray matter? This is interesting. When is your birthday? No, you tell me. When is your birthday? Birth date? Yes. Uh, St. Patrick's Day. Oh. St. Who? St. Patrick's Day, March 17th. Patrick? St. Patrick, yeah. Oh, okay. Oh. okay. My dentist's name is Patrick. Oh. Now I remember. That makes sense. Okay. Let's fucking talk about a dentist. My dentist. <laughs> teeth will fall off very soon but i'm sensing something a little bit along the line of falling off for you Ooh, maybe my hair oh my god it's not good i don't feel a good energy right now i don't feel a good uh, 
Are, are we actually paying for this? this is some... <laughs> Can you get to the point? Yeah, get to the point. Quit trying to milk us here. <laughs> I don't want to upset you. I don't want to make you regret calling me. Oh, I'm already regretting it because it's Jeez. coming out of my Just pocket. Just give him the goods, lady. <laughs> You're going to get diabetes and your full foot is going to fall off. Oh, oh my, my God. God. I fucking hate this. <laughs> That's a terrible fucking... You need to cut the sugar out of your diet. That's probably you true. Take care of your health. Stop drinking so much Ooh. beer. Oh, my God. Oh, she's Dude, dead on. She said you're going to get diabetes and your foot's going to fall off. <laughs> I, I feel... Diabetic and your foot is just going to fall. It's just going to fall off like a... Just gonna, yeah. That's I'm just gonna be good. walking. It's gonna fall off. That's a shame. That's not good. Eh. Like a peanut crack in half. I do like these bench beers. I can't stop. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Hopefully, they won't make your foot fall. All off. right. Well, thank you. I mean, I'm not sure if I believe in this shit, but uh, sure, I do drink a lot of beer. Anyways. Now I'm going to tell you. Okay. Both of you need to be meditate, yoga, do all the good stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. All right, all right, all right. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> that was, a, that was She a killed like buddy, that was probably like a forty dollar call. No, that was that I don't know how long that was. Let's see. She milked us, pal. I don't know. She told you your foot's gonna fall off. She told you you had long hair, buddy. I think she watches the that show. Was, uh, that was about a nine minute call. She probably watches the show. <laughs> Do you think so? Yeah, never know. I mean she did see a sea of green. And she said that you're, you know, she said that your foot's going to, I said you'd like to drink. She knows you like to drink. Who doesn't? Give me a break. I don't think you're going to get diabetes. Me neither. I'm healthy. I don't Fuck think you're, it. And especially if you did, even if you did get diabetes, I don't think your foot's going to fall off. <laughs> Not the way she explained I it. I think you'd be a responsible diabetic. <laughs> Maybe. All right. Anyways. All right. It's time for, I think we got Mitch coming up. Mitch yeah, he's about to call in. Let's, uh, let's get that uh, set up. Yeah. Let's All call. right, my man. This super show will return in a minute. 58 seconds, 59. What does it all mean? It's all relative. Mitch Markowitz. Just a minute. Yeah. No, Mitch just left the building. I, I flew in just for this particular event. Well, we really appreciate it, Mitch. Mitch, finally. Here you are, sir. We're big, big fans. Yeah. Uh, me too. Just a minute. <laughs> Yeah, there's my big fan. <laughs> That's so cool. So, so did you so, fly? Did you fly in by lying on your desk under a, like behind a green screen? Is that is that how you did that? Oh, nice shirt there, Mitch. Well, to That's tell very you cool. the honest truth, I didn't have to. I didn't have to fly in because I don't leave. I'm always here. Yeah, <laughs> I, I live in this office. So, Mitch, you you obviously you know big legend created one of the longest. I think it's the longest running children's Canadian television show uh, of all time. Just, just, just a minute. If you want to say big legend, I have to stand up so you can see the big part. This is my COVID part right here. <laughs> yeah, that's from COVID. Have you been now, saying? Have you now, been? Now I'm a big legend. Let's talk about how uh, hilarious. No, in, let's in, order, have... in order for me, to, in, in order for me to understand you, should I be putting on my glasses, a pair of sunglasses? Uh, <laughs> if you'd like to, you know, go maybe. ahead. Right, give me a second here. I'll get an appropriate pair. <laughs> no problem. Take your time, Mitch. <laughs> Mitch is a beaut. Look at the poster in the back too. He's got the hilarious House of Frankenstein. Yeah. Is that fan art, Mitch? Which? What are you looking at? Which one? The poster the in the poster back. Poster above there. your left shoulder. Yeah. Uh, over there? Yeah. Yeah. This? Yes. That That's a new one. We, I called it the family portrait, and it's done by a fabulous artist in Edmonton, Jamie Pruden, and um, he's been doing a series. He did the family portrait, which has, he just meant tilt the camera back a little bit so you can yeah. get it better. There you go. Yeah. So it's got, basically, it's got the entire cast in there, including the mosquito, and um, and then right next to it, is his newest piece. Can you see it there? Yeah. 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 That's all that's, you. That's me, me leaving the world and, and flying off to take care of the rest of the universe. And then this is a really nice piece beside me on the other side. A couple of friends put together this thing and they got in touch with <coughs> 50 fans and friends and asked if they would all send in a photograph of them wearing their Frankenstein t-shirt and they all did. And the Frankenstein t-shirts come from a number of different sources. I've got 
a good friend of mine, Ed Mattingly, has a, a he, he he does the Fright and Sign logo on T-shirts. That's cool. And then uh, uh, and they're available from Ed. He's at E Z Cuts K U T Z Easy Cuts. That's Easy crazy. Cuts at, at Hotmail dot com. Then there's the Retro Kid group, and they were they were doing. They had um, six different, I think, six or seven different T-shirts that they produced in the last couple of years. It's so cool. There the must be, one. there must be like a, um, a just a trove of uh, a Frankenstein memorabilia at this point. You must have, like, there must be just tons of it because it's such a, it's got such a big cult following, right? Well, there is a bunch, and there's more coming. Um, there are bobbleheads coming soon. Nice. And um, um, there's something, a new product out there called Squareheads. Right. And uh, and uh, he's doing a Frankenstein set that should be ready within the next actually week or two. They were very, very cool. And um, he's on Twitter, and I guess he's on Facebook as well. Squareheads, H-E-E-A-D-Z, Squareheads. Yeah. Mitch, so uh, Frankenstein, you created that, what, what 50 years ago? Well, just to clarify things, it's my brother and I created it right. and co-produced. I, I want so. I want to talk to you about that because I'm. What was the inspiration for Frankenstein? How did you get a, a network to make a show? Like, did you ha- have you had you made shows before? Have you created shows before? Like, how did how did how did that happen? Well, that's exactly how it happened. We, uh, my brother had my brother's seven years older than I. He was back then, and he still is. <laughs> We're talking about Riff, correct? Riff, and, Riff and, yeah, uh, Riff, Riff, right? Yeah. That's right. And he had produced a show for CHCH TV here in Hamilton, which is just outside of Toronto, as you right. know. Yeah, yeah. We're local boys. And that was a children's show as well. And that was before Frankenstein. He'd also done a bunch of other shows in the Hamilton studios for Hamilton and, and for other stations and networks around North America. And um, at one point, we decided to go and pitch the people at CHCH to do a a slightly different slant on, on kids' TV programming. They already had a couple TV kids' TV shows on CHCH, but they weren't anything at all to the scale of Frankenstein. They were just a good local show for Hamilton. Right. Did, did, did the network well, give you any pushback when you first pitched it? Because the show, it's like... It's, it's out there. It's out there, and it's not really... I mean, I guess it is a kids' show. You can get the kids' kind of tone to it, but adults and college kids really like this show a lot, too. So did they tell you, like, oh, this is a little too mature for kids, or did they give you any pushback on it, or what was their feedback? Uh, I'll, I'll tell you the lowdown on that. We went in to pitch the station. The, the general manager at that time at CHCH in Hamilton, his name was Sid Bibby. We went in to m- meet with him and, and pitch the show. And as I say, Riff had already done a kid's show there before, and they were very happy with that. And the other shows he had shot, they were very happy with. So he was sort of the, the quote unquote golden haired boy at CHCH. <laughs> Unlike the staff producers who could never do anything right. I mean, Sid was a tough taskmaster, but my brother could do nothing wrong and he wasn't staff. He was just an outside uh, producer that had produced some stuff for them. So when we went in and pitched it, the way Sid reacted was he said, well, that sounds like it's kind of interesting guys. Let me think about it. So we left the room, left the building actually with Elvis and, and um, <laughs> we realized almost immediately that we had not closed that deal or else he wouldn't have said, let me think about it. Right. So we arranged for another meeting a couple of days later, went back in and Riff looked at Sid and said, listen, Sid, what would you say if we told you we could get a real big time Hollywood star to be the host of the show? I'd say and that, Sid, yeah. being a real down to, Sid being a real down-to-earth kind of guy, didn't fool around. He said, like who, Riff? And Riff just sort of looked up in the sky like this. You know how when you're looking for some inspiration? Inspiration, you yeah. just look up like this, thinking you're going to see it up there somewhere. Right. And he just, from out of nowhere, he pulled down this and said, well, you know, like, like Vincent Price. Yeah, like the king of whore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Really? At, the time he, at the time he was. So Sid... Um, said, listen, I'll tell you guys, I'll tell you what, if you could get Hollywood superstar Vincent Price to come and be the host of a show on our little shitty TV station here in Hamilton, Ontario, I would sign (laughs) right here, right now for the 130 hour long episodes that you're pitching. 
130 long so, hour episodes. That's got yeah, be, that's so, a credible so, order. They order they wanted to order 130 episodes right out the hop. Well, I don't know that they wanted to order anything. I think that's what we had put forward to them. Because in order to make in order to be able to create on the level we wanted to create, we'd have to have a big enough budget. So you I mean you can't do six shows and spend that much money unless you're going to get, you know, uh, like these days a half hour show with a really reasonable budget is still five hundred thousand dollars. And so, a hundred and, and and the one hundred and thirty episodes that they wanted you to produce, did they tell you that you needed to get it done in eight months, or like how did that? I just can't even believe that you guys did that many episodes in that short a time. Well, the truth is, it wasn't eight; it was nine months. Okay. And they didn't tell us that, but we did arrange on a start date, and the start date was nine months forward from the day we the day we shook hands. And by the way, we did shake hands because, believe it or not. We took a contract with us when we went in to meet Sid. So when he said, I'd sign right here, right now, we pulled out the contract. He signed it. We left the building, got into the car, and started to drive back to Toronto. And as you know, it's just like a 40-minute drive in the middle of the day. And we yeah. looked at each other and said, how the blank are we going to get Vincent Price? <laughs> he, said, he said it was a given. Yeah. And we weren't even sure how to spell his last name, let alone being able to contact him or make him an offer. Right, but you knew you needed to get him. You needed to get you him. You needed now. him now. Yeah. We, we had a friend. Uh, his name was Al Guest. And at, at the time, Al was sort of the king of animation in Canada. He was the biggest animation company in Canada. And he had a <laughs> he had an animated series that he had brought out around the same time as Frankenstein. You may remember, it was called Rocket Robin Hood. And um, we talked to Al and, and just mentioned out of nowhere that we had sold the show, but the sale was more or less contingent on us having Vincent Bryce to be the star. <laughs> so I said, you know what? I know somebody who might be able to put you in touch with, with um, Vincent. And the, the person he knew was Forey Ackerman, Forrest Ackerman who, as you may or may not know, owned a magazine called Famous Monsters. And it was the most famous monster magazine in, in the world at that time. So we got in touch with Forey and, and told him our dilemma. And he also owned a lot of um, a lot of black and white stills from the old movies like Frankenstein and the, the, mm -hmm. the zombie movies. So and, he put uh, you in touch with Vincent Price? So he put you in touch with first, Vincent Price? We, yeah. we had to, well, first we had to agree to buy some black and white stills from him. And we knew we were going to be able to throw <laughs> them in here, you know, still here and it's still there and it's still there. Yeah. So we bought the pictures. Well, not bought the pictures, but we got licensing rights from him because he owned them. And then he agreed to give us contact information for Vincent. Yeah. And he did. He was as good as his word. And we got in touch with Vincent and... Um, I guess if you're familiar with the movie The Godfather, we sort of made Vincent an offer he couldn't refuse. The zany zoo was all a buzzin' the last time I was there, cause Buona Clyde, the story went, had somehow lost his hair. He'd woken up that morning and found that it was gone. He called upon the animals and soon the search was on. The robins were the culprits, so the rest you all can guess. Buona's hair was in the air and part of that bird's nest. <laughs> There he is. Wasn't the we, offer we like told them that we would get him? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I, I thought the offer. What I read online, maybe this is not true. I think it was like thirteen thousand dollars. Don't believe anything you don't, don't believe that you, anything you read online. Okay, so I read it was I I, I read it was thirteen thousand for like nine days of work, and you had to shoot all his scenes in like nine days or something like that. Well, you're half right. Okay, the dollar amount was right, but okay. one of the th one of the four ways we got him to sign the agreement was we told them we'd get him in and out of Toronto, or, you know, Hamilton, same thing. We'd get him in and out of town in two days. By the way, that's, <laughs> what? Yeah, that's, that's, not a, that's not a peace sign. That's the number of days we told them we needed a commitment. Oh, wow. God. So Vincent Price's rate was like 10 grand a day? That was, that's what he wanted? Like almost, it was almost six, like seven, seven and a half. Seven six grand, grand a day, yeah. yeah. Well, and, no, this was not going to be a normal rate because it appealed to him because he'd never done a kid's show before. Right. Yeah, he wanted to do and a kid's show, right? That was, that's what I heard. He wanted to do a kid's show, and um, we told him that we were very flexible as far as the date. So he, if he was shooting a movie summer, for example, Monday mm -hmm. through Friday, 
we would do it on Saturday and Sunday. We would do it on a Monday. Too. We would do it any, any at any two days that worked for him. So that made it much better for his schedule. And um, we told them that you don't have to worry about your reputation because this is a silly little city in the middle of nowhere, right. Hamilton. Yeah, no one's going to see it. See, <laughs> nobody, regardless of how regardless of how good or bad our show ends up being, nobody's going to ever see it. So you don't have to worry about it adversely affecting your reputation. Do you think the show would have been as successful if you hadn't gotten Vincent Price? I obviously now hearing this story, you wouldn't have had any show if you hadn't gotten Vincent Price. But do you think the show would have still been as as cult of a following, or or would have gotten as much attention if you didn't have just that Vincent? That, he's that in the show. Tag, he's, in, yeah. he's in the show for like what 30, 40 seconds an episode, but it does make a it does make a big difference, right? It does. Now the answer to your question. No, it, it wouldn't have had the same cachet. I mean, there was nobody bigger in the horror industry back then than Vincent Price. Have you ever seen so, the, Have you ever seen the uh, the Mask of the Red Death? Have you ever seen that film? No, doesn't Ex- ring a bell. Excellent Vincent Price movie. Oh, I'll make a note of watching it. Do, do you know what, Do you know what Vincent's favorite movie was? What of his? Uh, Pee Wee's Big Adventure. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, what is it? What is it? I mean, I mean the movie that he was in. It was oh, that he was oh. in. Oh, I'm sorry. I just figured. Yeah. You know, I just figured. Uh, I thought. I just. I don't know. I just thought Vincent Price might like some goofy kind of fun movies. You know. You just. What, what kind of guy is Vincent? Is he is he kind of a a dark guy or is he just like a, a very? Is he kind of what you think he is or is he not like that at well, all? We can't move on to the next until you've got you've answered the question or oh, you lose sorry. your points. Yeah. No. No answer. Oh, sorry. What was the answer? Oh, what was the answer for? What his was favorite? the answer for his horror movie favorite that he was favorite? Sorry, film. his favorite film. His that he did. I have no idea. I mean, I would think that one, but I haven't seen a lot of his films. So House on Haunted yeah. Hill is what I have for the guess. You know, you guys are obviously not millennials, or one of you would have looked it up on Google already, and you'd have the answer. <laughs> no, I don't. We don't like good. to cheat like that. I don't want to cheat. We're playing the game. Yeah. His, his, his favorite movie of his was called Laura. 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 I, I have never heard of that film. It. I have heard I've of that film. Seen it. I have heard of that film. And not not a horror movie, but a, a good movie nonetheless. And that was his favorite. One of his favorites, I guess, was of mine was The Fly, the original The Fly. Oh, Cronenberg. Yeah. Did you did, did you did you ever no, meet? No, no, wait, no, no, no. That's before Cronenberg was born. Cronenberg. Oh, was like the there's a, the original the, the Fly. Original Fly, the black and white one. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's, you're talking about is Jeff Goldblum. Jeff Goldblum, which is also yeah. a good which film as well. Great film. Great film. That almost made my top five. Mitch, what what did inspire the idea for Frankenstein? Like, was it films like The Fly? Was it was it did, what, what made you want to do a horror show with monsters? What made you want to do that show and make it a kid show and make it a kid show? Yeah, like what 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 what, what inspired this idea? How does this happen? Well, the reason that we wanted to do a kid show was because we had experience with it. I mean, we had done the Randy Day. It was called the Randy Dandy Show, and that was a fairly big hit in its day. So we knew how to do it. We knew, I mean, how to shoot a kid's show and, and what kids like and what kids don't like and what you can do and what you can't do. You knew the formula. And we also knew that they had a whole, CHCH, which you keep mentioning the word network, but the show was originally contracted to CHCH TV, a small independent TV station in Hamilton. I used to work for CHCH. Oh, I, okay. I, yeah, I was um, I'm a, I was a producer on a, a network uh, or sorry on a on a news show called uh, Inside the Story that CHH produces. Inside the Story. If we could figure out how to do it, we could do a high five. I know. Oh, you got to go this the other side. Other go side, other Mitch. side, other Mitch. side. Other You're side. High fiving me right now. I'm You're gonna high five yeah, Mitch too. There you though. go. There you go. Go to the other side. There you go. Ah, uh, there we go. <laughs> CHH boys. <laughs> What up? Hey, 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 hey. I just uh, my brother's gonna be upset that I just high fived. Uh, he's gonna Mitch be jealous. That he's I, gonna be jealous. The super hippie. I just high fived the super hippie. We've we've got some of our fans are big fans of yours, Mitch. So this yeah. is this is a big treat. We for were them. So, so excited. Actually, it's funny that I started doing a little more research and uh, I got turned on to your this show through my brother. He was like, "Oh, you need to watch this." I didn't start watching until my teens. And he grew up in the 70s and, uh, you know, he would have been a teenager in the 80s. Uh, But he's the one who introduced it to me in like the mid 90s for me. And I just recently introduced it to my daughter and it still captivates young kids. It's an excellent show. 
Yeah, it's and like funny. it still holds their attention. But did Mitch answer what inspired the show? No, oh, sorry, oh. I got off on a tangent there. Yeah. Sorry, Mitch. I want to know what inspired okay. it. No, that's okay. Hold, hold that tangent. We'll come back to it. Yeah. Thank you, Mitch. Oh, we go on um, lots what, of them. What, is, what inspired the show was we, we like I said, we knew there was a hole in their afternoon children's programming. They had two shows. One was called the Captain Andy Show, which was this nice enough older chap who would sit there and. There wasn't much happening in the show. Just a nice older man. The other one was Tiny Talent Time, which they've resurrected in the past yeah, couple of years. Yeah, that, oh that's God, that, yeah. that. Honestly, when I while I was working at CH, that was a big show for them. That was like a still. It still. Was, but it wasn't a really a big show for kids. It was for the adults because they got to see. Oh, how cute that little girl dancing. Honestly, dancing. that show stinks. I I, <laughs> <laughs> I don't like it. Uh, Feinstein is. Great, it's it's got a resurgence on Crave right now, and so yeah, so I, there's a I, whole I like it's a whole generation of people now that get to be introduced and see this thing. Exactly, and I can once again return to that most glorious of all places, Transylvania. As we cross from Blake through. <laughs> I fooled you. You thought I would hit the top one. <laughs> now what? What are you doing? It's under. It's awesome. Well, I, I was actually explaining to Mike on the phone that I, um, I now when I do a lot of appearances at comic cons and festivals and other live events, signing autographs and talking to fans and you know doing posing for posing for uh, selfies with them and things. Yeah. And and. Um, I'm now dealing with three generations of Frankenstein fans, like the the people who watched the original show back in 71, 72. Right. Exactly. Those are the grandparents now. Their kids watch some of the reruns in sort of the late 80s, early 90s. On global. And, and late 90s, I guess. And then their grandchildren are now watching it either on DVDs or on YouTube. Or about a year ago, I licensed Bell Media's, as you mentioned, Bell Media's Crave TV. And they're now streaming all 130 hour long episodes. So that's unbelievable, awesome. Mitch. Mitch, did when you guys signed that deal, you're driving back from Hamilton to Toronto. Did you, you mean, at after, all? After we said, holy, how are we gonna get Vincent Price? Right. After yeah. That? No. Yeah. After that, exactly. Did you think <laughs> at all for even a second that this show would be what it is, and still 50 years later, we're still, talking about it, still earning you money? Absolutely not. We yeah. had no idea whatsoever yeah. that this was going to be anything other than a nice little hour-long show for CHCHTV. Yeah, it wasn't even it wasn't even our idea to syndicate the show. After we were finished shooting it and it was it was ready to go on the air, actually we were chasing it because we couldn't get all 130 hour, hours done to make that start date. So I want to I want to ask you about that too, Mitch. I want to get into that how you were able to do 130 shows in eight months. I, I don't get it. Still, I, nine I still months, don't get it. Nine months. Nine months. Sorry, nine okay. months. Okay. So, but what, yeah, what, was the, what was the question here? The first question. Did you like? I mean, was there any? The the question is like, was there any indication that this was going to be obviously a cult hit no. that it was going to sustain for no. many many years? But when did you know no. it was? Also, the follow up is there's when did you know it was a hit? When did it? When did it become obvious that this thing is bigger than you guys ever thought it was going to be? We started to get fan mail. Uh, Hamilton did. CACH did. We didn't get it. The people, right. Because that's where it aired on that. And then they syndicated it across the country. So it played from Newfoundland to, ben, to uh, British Columbia, right? In all the major markets across the country. Yeah. And, and when we started to get fan mail, we realized, who knows? Maybe we got something here. Yeah. So we right away <laughs> created some postcards that we could send back in response to the fan mail. And they, they were signed by all of the cast members, you know, the Wolfman and Gazelda and Pat Pat yeah, yeah, and everybody. Yeah. The characters. Yeah. And, and uh, but even then, we knew fairly quickly that we had a hit in Canada. Then as it grew and evolved from there and became an international hit, because as you know, I think it it, it, it aired in all the major markets in mark markets in the <laughs> US. All the major markets, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. uh and it was a hit there as a matter of fact I, I was talking to somebody about i guess maybe two years ago he's the uh development guy at shout tv which is a streaming uh, yeah. company in, in the u.s and we were chatting i had originally reached out to the president of shout to see if they were interested in streaming frightenstein 
Yeah. And he passed me over and said, here's the guy you should be dealing with. And he passed me over to the head of their VP of development of acquisitions. And when I told him who I was and what I was calling about, he said, you know, you're lucky they passed you on to me because it's a big office. We got lots of people, but I'm probably the only guy in the office that would know your show because I grew up in Cleveland, Ohio, and we used to watch your show every day. Wow. And I love it. And I love it. I wonder, is now, it is, is the show bigger in the United States than it is in Canada? Obviously, it's a bigger market. Is it? Is it? Do you have more fans from the States than you do in Canada? No, because everybody in Canada knew it was a hometown or a home country show. Yeah. And they loved, they loved it even more because it's, it's part of us. You know, it's Canadian. I mean, like everybody in the world liked Dan Murray. But nobody's chest stuck out like this, like Canadians did, because she's she's our girl. She's from the east coast of Canada. You know, I mean, there's something to be said for that. Same thing with Burton and and uh, Randy Bachman. You know, I mean, the guests who were a huge international rock and roll hit, but nobody walked three feet off the ground like us Canadians every time they heard American Woman or, or With These Eyes or any of the other big guests to get through. It. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, okay. So now back to so yeah. How, we had, how when did we first realize that this was going to be a when, super hit? When did you know? Yeah, you got you got the fan mail. You said you started getting, but but obviously the show then goes to syndication. It goes. It gets it gets picked up into the United States and other markets. You guys shot right. all your episodes in eight and nine months, one hundred and thirty shows. Um. So did at that That's point? It. I I know it's crazy. I can't even believe it. But at that point. Did they say, well, this show's a hit. Do we, we want to make more? Or they said, we've got enough episodes to have decades full of content for and resyndicate and syndicate. Like, how how'd that work well, out? Well, their plan was only to run it five times a week. Uh, uh, you know, every after, if CHH ran it from four to five after school every day, five okay. days a week. And you were going to, so, so 130 episodes was considered one season? Well, no, one, well, one year, like one year, you, know, you get, you get like what, six months out of that. And then reruns and stuff. Right. So they bought a year's worth of products. And what we thought was it would run for a year and then it would die and go to television heaven. Right. But as we all know now coming up to our 50th anniversary in 2021, Unbelievable. that wasn't, that wasn't meant to be. It's been on in every decade since the seventies. It's been on the seventies, eighties, the nineties, the two thousands. 2010 and and now we're into 2020 one, one season rock, one season rocking and rolling so so was it years later that they decided that this was a hit and that this had vi that this, this this had legs or like i mean did they know first the first after the first year because i'm wondering why didn't they ask you guys to do more shows um that's a good question. Nobody's ever asked me that before. Hey, that's, hey, hey. Ten, points, ten points for you. Pick anything off the top shelf. <laughs> I want that poster. <laughs> Actually, the top shelf is pretty effing cool. Here, oh, I haven't seen the top shelf. Uh oh. Uh, what? Oh boy. What do we got there? All kind of Frankenstein stuff over there. Um, you live in Toronto, yeah, right? Right, Mitch. Yeah. I yeah. might. I, I might just come by and we'll hang out, and then I can find an find some memorabilia that I want to take home with me. How about that? Is that okay? I want the wig. <laughs> I don't actually handle any of the merchandising. What I do is I just license people. Yeah. And and then they're in the business of, of creating the art or making t-shirts or masks. We're now in the mask business. Um, and uh, that's Pierre Luc in Moncton, New Brunswick. And um, he's on, on uh, Twitter, I think Facebook as... PLA three, wow! And, so uh, or, or block t dot com. So and he's got a. a yeah, go ahead. No, no, no. I was gonna, I was going to say like, what like you probably when you did this deal with CH was it was it a conscious decision to keep the license to keep the rights to own the to own the show, or was there was were they trying to own it? Did they want to own the rights? Like how did that work? No, they're not in that business. They were in the television business. They so, had no interest whatsoever in that. Yeah. So we retained the rights, but we didn't really do anything in the rights until about, oh, I don't know how long it's been, maybe a decade or so. My brother owned the rights, and he, he signed them over to me. And as soon as I took over, I have a, a sales and marketing background. I mean, other than the entertainment industry, 
I was in the new home industry and I was responsible for the sales and or the marketing and sales. It's that order. First you market them, then you sell them. Right. Uh, thousands and thousands of new homes and condominiums in Canada and the United States. And, and I'd buy a house from that, a super hippie. I'd buy a house from the super hippie too. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Having, having that marketing experience led me to think about, like I, I, I was thinking of ways to fan the embers and keep the brand going forever. And the best way to do that, for example, is to have lots and lots of people walking down the streets wearing Frankenstein t-shirts and yeah. now Frankenstein masks and have Frankenstein bobbleheads and, and uh, just Frankenstein. Like, there's, there's Frankenstein coffee now one can buy. Yeah. That's I mean, it's, 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 it's iconic. It's this very cool iconography too. It's not just like, oh, this is a classic old show. This is a very cool show. Yeah. If you know this, you're cool. It's a very well, cool that, show. Thank you. Now, unfortunately, it didn't exactly work out the way we had planned. For example, the way we, we started off was, as everybody knows, after all this time, Billy Van, who was probably the funniest guy I've ever met in my career, but Billy Van was not our original choice to play the Count or any of the other characters. He wasn't even involved at all. My brother had another show going at the same time on CHCH, a game show, a charade show. It was called Party Game. What do you got from me, Big Bob? I've got about uh, five lines of... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Only kidding. I didn't raise my, my children, son to eat. And it was on CHCH, and it was a charade show where my there boy. were the home team, three Daughter stars on the home team, and three Violet. entertainers on the other home, on the other team, the, the, the yeah. guest team. And they took turns trying to guess what the charades were, and then it was it was a very popular show. It was on for years. And, okay, so um, who so who was your choice instead of Billy Van? I'll tell you the story gets even more interesting if you understand <laughs> why Billy Van wasn't not who, but why Billy wasn't the okay. Main interesting. Star. Let's let's hear. Let's because Billy that Van's a genius. Was, Honestly, I think he was he's brilliant. I think he's amazing in the show. He is. It was rest in peace. What was, yes. um, in case you don't know, by the way, I'm the only one left. Of we're the cast we're well place. aware. We're well aware. The last living member of Hel Hilarious House of Frankenstein, right here, here on our the show. Super hippie on Angels Live in Our Town. Angels Live and in Our Town. Tonight we're called Devils in Our Town. Let Devils and, in and, 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 and I'm proud to be an honor to be a guest on your show. By oh, the thanks, bitch. Honestly, we're the honor's super. All ours. Yeah, yeah, I'm super excited. Well, especially since we're going to be celebrating Halloween, which is what it's all about. Right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah exactly. Uh, we want to get into some of the maybe what what are your top five Halloween movies? I wouldn't mind hearing what Mitch is. Uh, yeah, what do you like to watch, Mitch? Top five. Back up, back up a little bit. I got to. We're all over the place. place. Honestly, we're super so much excited. To talk about. <laughs> okay, somebody tie that man down. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's how it worked. But when we were, uh, or as J J uh, Biden would say, Joe Biden would say, "Here's the deal." Here's the deal, man. Um, yeah. Come on, yeah. man. What, what our idea, our concept was that rather than have the best writers available in New York or Los Angeles or wherever, mm -hmm. we weren't going to rely so much on, on what was said and what was written. We were going to rely on, as much as we could, on what we call in the industry, sight gags. In other words, you look at it and you start laughing. Yeah. yeah. Especially since we're, dealing, we're going to be dealing with four or five, six-year-olds, they might not understand humor anyway, but they would understand a sight gag. Was that so the idea? Was with, that the idea with the mosquito sucking on the foot? Was that the idea behind? Yeah. Some people would give their right arm to be at my birthday party tomorrow, and they're invited as long as they bring a present, like a right arm. That's why you did yeah. that, okay? Because yeah. I was wondering, I was wondering why the mosquito would just suck on that big foot. I was, yeah, I actually, I've heard a lore yeah. that a lot of people thought drugs were involved no, while you guys were making. To, if I don't get to finish this story, you're dead meat. Okay, go 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 on, continue. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry. Okay. Go, go on. Okay. Continue. Okay, so um, <laughs> we thought the best way to do a sight gag on this, and, and the concept was already, we, we conceived the concept of it being a scary show in a castle and like that. And um, so the, the sight gag was we were going to look for the largest man we could find in, in, in the world and, and who could talk. And <laughs> it didn't even have to be talented, just be a huge man. And we were going to paint him green and he was going to be the Count's assistant, and, we, and we'd call him Igor. At the same time, 
we thought we would find the smallest human being, the smallest person we could find, man, and um, he would be the count. So as soon as you look at the count and Igor, and you see one is huge and one is this big, it's, it's funny. I mean, that's an automatic sight gag. So we we found a big man that was relatively easy. Uh, he he, he is a sight to see on the show. Yeah, his name was Fishka Reyes. He was from South Africa. He had done a little bit of, of uh, television and he'd done one film and he, he had passed done a little tiny bit of a little he, tiny bit of stand up comedy. He passed shortly and, after the show was done recording. Correct. Yeah, I'll yeah. tell you that story too. Let me just finish this. Yeah, one. yeah. Sorry, so, I just got. Uh, Go ahead. That's, that's, that's okay. I'll be happy to tell you that one. So um, anyway, we hired him. He had an interesting accent. He had a South African accent. And we figured if you're four years old, you're not going to know the difference between a Transylvanian accent and, and a South African accent. 100%. So he, was, he, he was a given. I was doing the boogaloogaloo. Never mind the boogaloogaloo. And what is this? Some records I found in the basement, Master. I think they belong to your grandfather. Really? Yeah. What, what are the titles there? How much is that sloth in the window? Back to the, the concept. We, we thought we would look for a sight gag. We'd, we'd find the biggest man we could find to play Igor, the Count's assistant. And we find the smallest human being we could find to be the Count. So <laughs> finding Igor was relatively easy. It wasn't a big deal. Finding a, what is politically correct, a little person mini count back then <laughs> yeah that was that was that was a bitch that was difficult we looked all across canada talked to all the agents we could we looked in the u.s to be honest with you we came up with one or two people that we thought we would interview and that didn't even work out too old too young whatever yeah finally an agent called us and said he's got a guy who was born just outside of Sas saskatchewan of saskatoon and he's 31 inches tall Oh, holy so shit. <laughs> we made a very silly mistake and we said he's hired. <laughs> anybody that small, any, anybody that small standing next to Igor, who was about six foot three and three three hundred and fifty pounds. Yeah. We thought, what a fabulous sight What that. a we sight to a see, yeah. Doctors have just x-rayed my head. What did they find? Nothing. What a great gag. <laughs> so all we, all we gotta do is paint them both green. And it's like it's everybody's gonna laugh. <laughs> I'm laughing. Like now. that's that's like okay. basically Mike Myers stole that bit for for Austin Powers, Mini Me. That's been, that's basically Mini Me. Mini well, Count. He didn't steal. He didn't steal it. He gave us credit for it. But did he, he really? He did, yeah. Oh wow! Yeah, I didn't know that. The, he was given the key to the city, and when he was talking to the mayor and the audience, he said, "Listen, I got to give credit where credit is due." I'd, I'd rush home from school every afternoon. My mom would give me a plate of cookies and a glass of milk, and I'd watch Hilarious House of Frankenstein. And then when wow. I got older and richer and started to produce my own stuff, and I did the Austin Powers movies, the Mini Me and Maxi Me, I got that directly from Hilarious House of Frankenstein. Wow. The Mini Count. Represent yeah. the Mini Count. That's I, I awesome. think some people owe you some checks because, like, I've seen, I've, I've seen that, like, guys like uh, Jim Carrey, Mike Myers is another one. Um, they all Alice, give you credit. Alice Cooper, Alice Alice Cooper. Cooper big, big fan, John Candy. John Candy. Um, John Candy. Russell Peters, yeah. all big fans. I'd imagine most, ki most kids in Canada who ended up being comedians were influenced heavily by Frankenstein. Well, it was hard not to be because it right. was the biggest show of its type and, and still is. I mean, there, there's never been another kid show. In Canada, actually in the states either. I Not, nothing like that, Mitch. That's for sure. No, I went to that extent. No, so uh, it. Um, so anyway, that that's where we started. The, the mini count was going to be the count, and Igor was going to be you know the big guy was going to be Igor. We made arrangements for them to come out to the house. We had rented a big mansion in Etobicoke, which is the um, uh, like a suburb, uh, part, a suburban part of Toronto. We had rented a big house there with an indoor pool. My brother and I had, and his wife, and his two Dobermans. And that's where we did all the pre-production for the show. And um, so we made arrangements for Igor uh, Fishka Race to drive out to the house and pick up Guy Big. That was his name, by the way, Guy Big. Now, he wasn't born with that name, obviously. Obviously but not. That's what he called himself. They both lived downtown in Toronto. So uh, Fishka picked up Guy 
They drove out to the house. The house was set back pretty dramatically from the curb. And I could see that I was standing in the living room window waiting for them to show up. And I could see uh, Fishka drove an old beat up piece of shit Volkswagen Beetle that was held together with duct tape. He pulled up into the driveway and there was gray smoke spewing out of the exhaust. He was a starving artist, like everybody in this right. country is. Well, yeah, I was gonna. Ask, yeah, I was gonna ask you if, if if CHH gave you a decent payday for the show. Did they did they pay well? Because they didn't pay me well when I worked there. <laughs> well, all you had to offer was yourself. Yeah. What we had to offer was 130 hours of children's television programs. That's that's awesome. Yeah. And I bet yes. you they still shortchanged you. Sorry, Vincent Bryce. I mean, you didn't ask for much more. I feel like they still shortchanged you, Mitch. I have a feeling they just—they're just too cheap. I don't—I don't—I don't feel. Did they give you a good payday or what? I'll tell you what it was. It's no big secret. They—they they paid us a half a million dollars, and they paid for the below the line. Below the line means they gave us the studios, they gave us the um, the cameras, they gave us the cameramen, the makeup lady. That's that's called below the line. Right. Yeah, I know. Yep. Above the line, we, we creative, in, yeah. We put in the above the line, which is the writing, the, writing, the, the talent, the performers, the yeah. makeup, the costumes, the sets, the talent. So, and you and you so, were able to produce the whole show for half a mil. Well, it was 1970. It was 50 years ago, man. Right. That, that, yeah. That's a lot of, that's, that's that like, a lot of dough back then. They that's a lot of dough. Yeah. They never spent that much money on anything. But you wow. guys had Vince and Price. <laughs> yeah, that's you, true. but but they, so they paid all that money and they didn't want to own the rights. Well, we didn't give them a choice. I mean, all they wanted was an hour's an hour, a year's worth of programming. Yeah, they didn't. Care. Nobody cared about the rights because what good are they? The show's gonna die and go to TV right. heaven. Yeah, no one look. gave a shit about the rights. Yeah, they they no, they didn't play English, back, Mitch. They fucked and, up. And back then, yeah, they <laughs> fucked up. And back then, they didn't even really know about syndication, right? Like syndication wasn't well, even really a thing. Yeah, it, was, it was new back then. It was new. Yeah. So let's get back to finishing this story about Guy Big and Igor. Sure. Can I can they, I just stop in, you for one knock second? On the door, guy, knock on the door. Guy Big is the mini for the fans that don't know is the mini guy, the guy that's three to thirty one inches. Mini inches. Yeah, I just want to let people count. know that are okay. don't know. I just it's funny that he chose the name Guy Big. <laughs> that, is, that is interesting. <laughs> Very funny. <laughs> because on his license plate um, it probably says big or his, his driver's license says big guy. <laughs> right? It's like big right. <laughs> okay, sorry, that's I just wanted to clarify go for on, people. Go on, sorry, Mitch. So, um, okay, so they came in, I, I greeted them, I took them back downstairs to the pool area, which is where I was going to run through their lines with them and just make sure that they were up to the job, you know, because we had basically hired both of them on the telephone. I know that sounds strange, but we were in a hurry. So, and we thought, like I said, all we needed was a lot, enough sight gags and everybody would be laughing and maybe in tears all the time. So we started doing uh, Kingfishes, or his, his, Fishka's nickname was Kingfish. So we started doing, Kingfish and I started going through his lines. I spent an hour with him, two hours with him, and I just gave him one of these, thumbs up. You know, I mean, he was terrific. He, he sounded like a big, stumbling guy that would be called Igor and be an assistant to a count in a crazy old castle like ours. He was perfect. Now I started to read the lines with Guy Big. <laughs> and I started, and we read, and we read, and we read. And he just, he couldn't do it, man. I mean, I'd give him a line to read like Igor, get the door. And he would, and one of his other problems was he had a size that was, he had a voice that was the, the size of him. It was right. like, well, that makes sense. His voice was like <laughs> this big. It's like so a little I'd mini a speaker. It's like a Bluetooth speaker. I'd, I'd, I'd give him a, yeah, but they didn't have Bluetooth back then. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd give him a line like, get the door, Igor. And he would go like this. <laughs> and I worked with him on that for about three effing hours until I finally showed him how to do it. I said, listen, just do it like this. Go like this. Igor, get the door. That's the way a count sounds, more right. or less. Right. I mean, if you, were, if, you, if you grew up watching the Dracula movies and all those other monster magazines, anytime you saw Bella Lugosi, you would... Igor, get the door. You yeah, know, that, that's a count, right? Yeah. So he tried it again and again and again and again and then, and finally I said, "Okay, guys, that's it for today." I, I called my brother and said, "We got to have a meeting." We had a meeting, and I said, "Riff, 
the little guy just can't cut it. He can't do it. He doesn't have it in him. He doesn't have a funny bone in his body. <laughs> so, and, and I'm not magic. I mean, I can't make the guy funny. I mean, I'm funny. I know how to do funny. I've written funny, but I can't make magic. Yeah. So we decided we we're going to have to fire him. And we decided the way we decided everything, we would, we're going to draw straws and whoever loses has to fire him. And every time we drew straws about a decision like this, I lost because my <laughs> brother was the big brother. So he always worked it out somehow. So I lost. Okay. You got the, you got the short straw. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So now I had to go to Hamilton and fire guy big. And I was, I didn't want to go in the worst way. I didn't want to go there alone, but Riff refused, absolutely refused to go with me. I looked around and asked a couple other people. Anyway, finally, my best friend, Marshall, acquiesced and said, all right, I'll go with you if you're buying lunch. So we, I picked him up. We drove to Hamilton. We had, put, we had put Guy up in a motel right around the corner from CHH. Now, I don't know where you worked, which studio, but they had I worked, two um, at the time. I worked out of Toronto. Um, the company's owned by uh, Channel Zero now. I actually worked for Channel Zero. They own CHH, so. Okay, well, I, no, I know that. But, and, and back then... They had three studios. They had one, a little one, in their Toronto offices on Carlton, right next to Maple Leaf Gardens. Oh, we know our, our, our offices were on uh, new yeah. offices uh, on Dundas. I know. I've been there. Yeah. But, um, uh, um, but um, th they had two studios in, in Hamilton. One was a big one called the Teva Center, where they had the wrestling matches and things like that on King Street. Mm -hmm. And the other one was built right behind the mansion at Caroline and Jackson. And that was Studio A. That's where we basically shot all of Frankenstein, in Studio A. Yeah. Now, a lot of people think it was shot in the Teva Center, but that's not true. Um, so we, there was a motel right around the corner from Studio A, and that's where we had put Guy Big up. I got to the bar in, in the motel, and when I came in, thank God, he was already sitting up on a bar stool, so I didn't have to pick him up and put him on the bar stool. That's so got to be awkward, him. yeah. yeah. <laughs> awkward. I mean, I mean could, you, could you imagine holding someone while you fire them? <laughs> Guy, I'm really yeah. sorry, but uh, you're no longer going to work here for us. And then See you, you put later. him down. Yeah, and then you put him down. <laughs> Yeah. No, no, I can't imagine that. Thank you very much. <laughs> I could. Anyway, okay, I going. got there and I thought the best way to do with, deal with this is just shoot from the hip and tell him the truth. So I did. I said, listen, guy, you, you, none of this is your fault. What I'm going to tell you is all our fault. We didn't do our due diligence. We didn't give this enough consideration. We didn't do enough research. We just hired you on the telephone. But the truth of the matter is, you're a great guy. You're a, a wonderful person. You're not funny. But but you can't cut the, the lead part, doing the lead part in 130 hours worth of television. You're just not, you can't do it. Not in you. But I'll tell you what we will do for you. A, we'll let you keep the tuxedo we made for you. B, <laughs> that's custom. Yeah. That's going to be hard to find. Not like it was, like was going to fit me or anybody else. <laughs> no. Uh, B, we'll pay you what we had agreed to pay you. Oh, that was nice. And yeah, it was. And, 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 uh, D and then I, or C, I guess the most important thing was we'll find you another role. We'll give you another gig on the show. You're just not going to play the lead. Mm -hmm. And he took it like a man. And I jumped out of that place and into the car and zoomed back to Toronto as fast as I could. I never had, I never had a task that I, 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 was more uncomfortable with than firing guy big. Um, Even though he story. was not intimidating whatsoever. <laughs> not for any reason. I, I was no. not comfortable with that. Yeah. Well, it's not, so, it's not comfortable firing anyone really. It's gotta be tough. No, it isn't. Not unless your name is Donald Trump and, and you have a TV show where that's right. what you're famous for. You're yeah. fired. Right. He did. And, he did. He did seem to enjoy it. Yeah. So um, <laughs> anyway, now he was out. We needed yeah. a count. And we started to really sweat it now because we we're running out of time. We we're supposed to start shooting. So I'm, I'm, I, I, I think I missed this part. So you guys were originally going to count the, you're going to cast the count as a 31 inch man, the, the lead role. And he was, getting, they wanted this guy for the lead, but then they thought, oh, we'll get him something else. And then they created the, the little mini Igor mini, part, mini count. No, no, count. Brilliant. no mini, mini, oh, count. mini count. Mini count. Oh, mini yeah. count. I okay, yeah. 
Mini yeah. Igor would have been good too. <laughs> <laughs> it would have, but we, we were keeping that Igor. We only wanted to trade the count. Right, I got and, you. Uh, he already had the outfit. I mean, it seemed like a perfect way to use him. And know? it's hilarious. So then, so then, how did you find Billy Van, and how did you know that he was going to be just like the 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 linchpin in the show? I mean, he played how many different parts, and he was just several. Thirteen. I love doing characters in your and the, and the hilarious House of Frankenstein. All right. Well, that was game open. You know, wide open for me. <clears throat> Griselda, the ghastly gourmet. <laughs> that being done. And I am the wolf man. Even before there was a wolf man. That's right. That's right. I, I didn't hear about yeah, the wolf man yeah. song. And uh, Dr. Pet and pets are friends. 13 different Jesus. parts. So, like, I mean, did you guys, when you guys hired him, did you want him to do all those parts? Or did you just kind of meet this guy say, what a dynamo Absolutely. of talent? No, neither of those. Absolutely not. What happened was, and, and are you familiar with the expression, sometimes you don't see the forest for the trees? Yes. Or yeah. You do Trees are, right. So we did not have Billy in mind. We started to think about who we could use. We had a, th- a couple of different people we thought about. One of them actually was on the, the party game show, Risk Party Game Show, and was uh, uh, Jack Duffy. And he, I don't know why we even liked the look of him, but we, th- we thought the look might work for the, uh, for the count. Yeah. So we thought about a bunch of different people. None of them worked out. And then we were talking to Billy one day because he was on Party Game. Jack Duffy, Billy Van, and Dinah Christie were the home team on, on, on Party Game. So we were talking to Billy one day, and we said, geez, we got this big dilemma here. We don't know what to do. We're, we're, we're about to start production. We've already started the writing for this new show, but we had to get rid of the count. And he said, let me do it, man. I'd like to do it. And we said, Billy, you're already working five days a week on Party Game. I mean, I don't know if you got enough in you left to do uh, another show. Anyway, make a long story short, he twisted our arm. He said, I can do it. Leave it with me. And we said, um, okay, you're in. You can do the count. Period. Just the count. One character. Right. I was going to tell you, Mitch, I mean, just hearing these stories, you got so many stories about Frightenstein, so many rich stories. I feel like this might be, this This might have been like one of the best times of your life am i wrong like it just seems like it was so much fun so exciting these problems just <laughs> creatively it was just seems well, awesome like, wrong, wrong again no you, you hated it you hated it you know what everybody asked me what was your favorite part about the show about doing the show yeah and i tell everybody the same thing there was no favorite part it was the hardest i had ever worked you know, any any of us had ever worked in our entire life it is an impossible feat to do the pre-production the production and most of the post-production on 130 hours of television in nine months. No, I, I can't. I, I can't even. I can't. I don't know how you did it. I still don't know how you did it. I don't remember. It's an impossible feat. So it was, and it was a bitch. So uh, my answer was there was no no fun involved. There was but no good that's, time. That's kind of my point. It's like you guys del- you guys did the impossible, delivered 130 shows in eight months, and no one asked you to do any more. Like no one said nine like months. you guys. Nine. Nine months. And nine, sorry, nine months. I keep, I keep reading okay. eight. I keep reading eight. So nine months. But oh, wash like, my hands. Nine, nine months. <laughs> I got it in nine months. But I'm saying, like, you guys achieved the impossible, delivered 130 shows on a pretty, you know, reasonable budget in nine months, and no one says, let's give these guys a little more money, maybe a little more time, and let's see what they can, what else they can do. Like, I mean, it's crazy. We broke the bank there. I mean, yeah. they, they never, I told you, they never spent that much money in their lives. Do you think they had buyer's anyway, remorse? No. Would you guys, you guys would shoot every day then? Five days a week or like seven days a week? Like, how'd you guys do this? Sounds like seven. Um, we just kept going until everybody dropped. Wow. And then, yeah. so did you guys shoot everything and then do the post? Or would you guys like shoot, do the post, get a new episode out, start every week and like kind of like deliver them as they would go? No, wrong again, white man. <laughs> we did. We didn't do that. We, we we revolutionized the industry back then, because the the way a normal show was shot, like an hour long sitcom or something, mm-hmm. is they would shoot the whole show, and it would take anywhere from a week to three weeks to shoot a one hour show. Right. We knew that if we did it that way, we would be three years in the making, and none of us mm-hmm. could afford to do this show for three years. Right. There wasn't enough money in it. And also, mm-hmm. nobody could last that long. You'd die. So what we did was we would go in on a Monday, 
to put the makeup on, let's say the librarian, and then we would bang out, let's say, 10 or 12 librarian bits by five o'clock in the afternoon. Ah, so you shoot all the librarian bits or all the count bits all in one day, all the all the Wolfman bits, all you yeah, know, not all. About, about ten or twelve. You get as many as you can in one day, and then like Tuesday you do this, these bits and that bit, you know. No, wait, no, wait, go, go back. We're not finished yet. Now it's about five o'clock. Riff and I are ready to call it a day. The crew who were non-union at the time were prepared to call it a day and go home. Right. And Billy. Billy is a workaholic. He just kept wanting to grind away. So he'd say, no, man, let's, I got, I got another one in me. Let's do one more. Let's do one more. So we said, listen, are you sure we don't want to burn you out? We want you to be able to come in tomorrow morning and be fresh. Man, I got it in me. Let's do another one. Sure enough, we do another one or two. As much as he, he was prepared to go, we do another two or three episodes. Now we're getting close to 10 o'clock, 1030 at night. The crew is looking at us like, man, this is not what we thought this was going to be all about. They had no idea. They'd never done anything like this. Yeah. And they were getting off on it because what they used to be doing was wrestling. The, the, the couple kids shows they did, like uh, like a cooking show. They'd never done anything this big and this this grandiose, if you will. Right. Well, so, weren't, you, weren't you guys all on psychedelics when you guys were doing this? <laughs> weren't, you guys, like, weren't, you guys, like. weren't you guys all high as kites when you guys were making the show no as a matter of fact everybody thinks that i was stoned because that's what i was supposed to do super well, hippie, you're the super hippie sound stone. yeah yeah so i was supposed to sound stoned and i i did but i wasn't i never did any drugs during the day so <laughs> so really so no one no one after the party none of, none of the show was inspired by psychedelics or psychedelic drugs anything like that None. It's just it's acting, you know. I mean, you don't have to be a, a, just just a, a, stuff no, a bunch but, of creative but, people getting together, the being creative. The show's out there. I mean, it's got a lot of out there ideas. I think people think they see it and they're like, "What the hell was that guy on when he came up with that idea?" You know, that's kind of like what they the vibe they get. You know, that it's, it's my job, man. You know, you know when, you see it, when you see an actor playing a drunk on TV, he didn't really drink three bottles of, of liquor. I mean, no, no, he's no, acting. no. I know, but the uh, I mean, when you're portraying that, but I'm saying. The, the show itself, you look at it, it looks like a psychedelic trip. Like, it looks like someone was having a hallucination and came up with this brilliant show. That's kind of like... You, you, know, you know what? You're the seg Segway king of Canada. You know, you, you just keep opening doors for me. Well, I got so when much to talk, talk to you about. When you talk about psychedelia, yeah. the Wolfman. The Wolfman was the place that the psychedelia really came in, right? Yeah. And the way that happened was it was an accident. I don't know, if you remember being on the floor, okay. the way the cameras, and back then, by the way, a camera now, a video, a, a TV camera, is like this size. That's what that's modern technology, digital technology. Back then, the, the TV cameras were like about three feet long and about a foot and a half wide and a foot and a half or two feet high. They were massive. And when you were not attending to your camera, when you weren't manning, which you pardon the expression, your camera, you would turn a lock here, and that would lock the camera in place. One day, one of the cameramen forgot to turn his lock on and tighten it. So the camera goes like this and starts to aim down. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Sure enough, it aimed right at one of the monitors that were on the floor off to the side behind, beside the wolfman. Yeah. And all of a sudden, we're, we're all standing around. We're looking at the screen on the monitor. And everybody in the world that's been to a rock concert knows what feedback is. When you, when you hold the microphone in front of the, the speaker, yeah. it starts going screeching, that horrible sound, right? Well, with television, with video, it's the same thing. If you aim the camera at the monitor, it, they start to feed back, and it gets mm -hmm. all crazy-looking shit on the screen. Right. So we were, look, we were looking at it, and we said, you know what? We got something. <laughs> Something with this accident right instead of instead of firing the cameraman for not locking in his camera yeah i think he got a bonus he got a free lunch that day or something oh that's, that's <laughs> so, what we call that's what we call a happy accident yeah so we played with it a little more and add a little more color here and a little more there and this that but all that great psychedelic shit where that where the wolfman is playing his guitar yeah and then uh, uh, fish either gets up and dances beside him and then it all turns psychedelic behind him 
that was all through the introduction of psychedelic on the screen vis-a-vis the cameraman making an accident and not locking his camera in place. So you said your brother had the rights for a long time and like nothing really happened with them until he signed them over to you who had a, he didn't you know, have time. He, was, he didn't have time. He was a busy guy. Yeah. But I, last, he, just, he just retired about three or four years ago. Prior to that, he owned a theater in Palm Springs, the only live theater in Palm Springs downtown. Not only did he own the show and run the show, but he emceed the show and he never missed a gig in 23 years. Wow. He didn't have time to be selling Frankenstein popcorn or t shirts right. or whatever. I bet she left yeah, a lot of money on the table, but I, I, well, I, I read in, I read in 2018 uh, a company called Head Spinner bought the rights. Is that correct? Uh, no, almost correct. He, I licensed them the rights. You licensed them. I, I still own the rights, but I licensed them the rights to do a reboot, which of course means a new version of Frankenstein. Right. And a 50th anniversary because 2021 is our 50th anniversary. Is that That's reboot? Awesome. Is, is that reboot going to be animated or is it like new characters, live action? And the third thing, so there's oh, the reboot. Sorry. There's the 50th anniversary and the potential of doing a an animated version for a younger demographic, like a four to six year old demographic. So those are what that's what Head Spinner was tasked with, and they've been working on it ever since. Um, they have a development deal and and for for the reboot, and they're working on the 50th anniversary. Uh, there's also a documentary in the works. So yes, you, that you were almost entirely right with that. The <laughs> reason it's not finished, by the way, and out yeah. there, is because of the, I know I'm not allowed to say anything even remotely political, but because of the, <laughs> China, the China virus, the yeah. COVID-19 virus, yeah. because it cut down our entire industry. I mean, it just, it's, it's been a horrible year for everybody in the entertainment. Yeah, it industry. sucks. Yes. Um, yeah. But you know what? They have Hilarious House of Frankenstein on Crave TV yeah. to keep them occupied, keep them entertained, keep the people entertained. And you know what we have to look forward to? Uh, the, the 50th anniversary next year. We can't wait 50, for 2021. I, that's what I was going to say, Mitch. I'm looking really forward to new stuff from Hilarious House of Fright, uh, Frankenstein, um, new content, new stuff. I think this is a great you know, thing. It was great meeting you, great talking to you, great getting insight into this wonderful Canadian Hallmark. It's it's an iconic yes. show, and and you know being a Canadian and and, and just being a Canadian show, I'm very proud, very proud of the show. Yes, thank you, Mitch, and what it's done it's my, and what you've done. My pleasure, my pleasure to guest on the show. And by the way, when I said there's lots of things happening, whether it's new shows or new product or whatever, Frankenstein stuff. Anybody who is on Twitter, just follow me on Twitter. It's the at sign, and then it's I'm like I am, TVs, TVS. Super hippie, H I P P Y. I'm super, TV, super hippie. hippie. We'll put that and up anything, right here. I'm sure you'll put it up on your on your website. Yeah, but we'll put that up. And anything new that happening with Frankenstein, I post it on on my on TV super hippie Twitter site. Awesome, very cool. So fans can keep up to date with what's uh, going on with the show, the fran- like uh, and super hippie, and you know, eventually when COVID ends, I'm sure Comic Cons events. You want to get the super hippie signature. You want him to meet him in person, shake his hand. By the way, you mentioned Comic Cons and live festivals and things. I do appear at them. I'm the only celebrity, if you will, that I have ever seen or I've ever known or have ever worked with that doesn't charge for a poster. Or a signature, an That's autograph. That's unbelievable. So, what a good guy. I don't want to intimidate people from coming up to me if they still have to buy lunch and, and have enough money to get home. So if I'm at a show, by all means, come up, say hello, and let's chat for a couple minutes, let's take a picture together. I'll give you a beautiful cover poster, and I'll be happy to autograph it for you. That's amazing. No charge. What a friendly guy. Honestly, Mitch, you've been, you're so accessible to your fans, and uh, I love that kind of thing. And um, I really appreciate you coming on the show today, sharing uh, your stories with us. And, uh, oh, we have a game. Fuck, we haven't even got to this game yeah. yet. You want to play a quick game with us, we got Mitch? We game, Mitch. Um, you know what? A super heavy would say, that'd be groovy, man. Let's do a game. <laughs> You're going to love it. You're going to love it, Mitch. Okay, so, Mitch, this is the game. We're going to play you a short little clip, okay? Like a, like maybe five seconds, six, six seconds, maybe ten seconds, okay? Of someone okay. screaming. And you have to decide whether it's a scream of ecstasy or horror. Ecstasy or <laughs> Horror. You think that's horror? Yeah. I'm sorry. 
You're kidding. No. No, nope, not Sorry. a horror, Mitch. That was that was a, a scene of ecstasy uh, from a show called Doom Patrol. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. This isn't an easy game, Mitch. It's, not, because it's a pretty hard one, Mitch. We, we, we did admit. fish the internet for the hardest ones to get. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Let, let's try one more time. This time I'm going to bet well, we, one super heavy card. Oh, nice. Oh, okay. nice. Okay. Put that on the table. I'm going to put, it, I'm gonna put a tricky <laughs> one right. here for you, Mitch. Okay, you ready? Yeah, yeah. let's give him another one. <laughs> Do I want to hear it again? Please. Closer to the mic. <laughs> That's a tough one. That's a tough one. This is a tough one. I'll say that's somewhere between ecstasy and comedy, but not horror. That is also wrong. (laughs) (laughs) Um, That one. Yeah, no joke. (laughs) He's got the gun <laughs> to his head. That that is actually that's actually a clip from Pulp Fiction. That's Mia. That's Mia Wallace uh, getting out of her overdose. Oh jeez. Oh my God. You know what? I just watched that movie last night. Oh, yeah, it's a t- that you was, weren't listening. I, here, I'm gonna play it again for you. Tell me if you can recognize it. <laughs> oh, now I hear it. Now that now you pointed you it out, I hear it. Now. <laughs> oh, man. It's a tough. You guys make it. You guys make it tough to be a guest. So how, so show. how do you, how do you, were you mailing us that card now or? Yeah, I think we just want a card. Okay, we got a couple, we, we got a couple more, Mitch. We got, we got two couple, more, Mitch. We got a couple much. We got a couple more, okay? Ready? Okay. One more time, I just played the volume up. Okay. One more time. Okay. Ecstasy or horror? I'll play it one more time. One more time. One more time. Give it to him again. (laughs) Ecstasy. No. (laughs) God, get out of here. It's. It's. uh, That's from Dumb and Dumber. That's Jim Carrey in Dumb and Dumber. If you can believe it, when uh, the guy comes into the stall and he's gonna beat him up. Hey okay, everybody out there in podcast land, this is Mitch Markowitz, aka Super Hippie, signing off. I can't beat this game. No, well, we got one more. We got one more, Mitch, one and then more. we'll leave you. We'll let you be. Okay, we'll try it one more time. This one. Might I be want hard. you to get it right, Mitch. I want to get. Why don't you get one at least one right? This is a tough yeah. game. It I is a tough game. You tough. made it a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to try it again? Yeah. That's nowhere. Try it one more time. I see him thinking about it. He's thinking. Once again, it sounds like a laugh. I'll say ecstasy. Groovy. Hey! Hey! We got one. There we go. You redeemed yourself. Hallelujah. Groovy. I can sleep tonight. No well, joke. You know what? That's that's. I think that's a good. We ended on a good note. I ended on a good note. That's that a great a one. That Thank you one. so much, Mitch. This was so much fun. Mitch, yeah, that was great, buddy. Thank Honestly, you. Thank you for pleasure. replying. My pleasure. Now, this is the first podcast I'm going to do this. I'm going to take off my shirt and show you the rest of this because it's a hand-painted T-shirt, and it's the only one in the world. And Wow. It's a, as you it's a super see, hippie. There's the front with super hippie, right? Yep. So cool. And then when I turn around, can you see the message? Can, can you, you dig, dig it? that? Can you dig that? That's awesome. So you're saying you're saying I can't get that T-shirt, Mitch? Only one in the world. Only one. A fan made that for you, Mitch. Uh, Mitch, you should definitely let's license those and start making a, like a fortune. Come on. <laughs> well, you have to you have to sell it for a whole lot of money because this is not like your everyday T-shirt where they put the machine, boom, boom. It's yeah, done. yeah, yeah. This is hand painted, huh? Yeah, that's painted. awesome. Wow. That's how that's how uh, the fans love the show. I'd imagine I you them. get so much stuff, cool stuff in the mail from fans, like people just creating stuff because they love it so much. I saw this one picture of you standing next to a life-sized wax figure of Igor. It looked like he was there in the room. It was crazy. You know what? He's downstairs, and it's funny because when I get people, and he's not wax. He, he's 
he's a composite. His, his head was made in uh, Vancouver by an artist. His body was made by a special effects company in Montreal. The clothes were all custom made by a separate company in Montreal. And then he was all put together. Did you ask he's them to make it? Spot. Did they ask, did you ask them to make it or did they just make it for you? It's a, it's a long story. I, I bought it eventually. Oh, okay. it, it's, it's a long story how it happened, but it, it, it's so funny because every time before COVID-19, when I occasionally had some guests come to the house, I would take them downstairs and, and show them him. And everybody wants to get a picture next to him because he's an actual life size. He's six foot three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My, my standard line is I tell everybody when Fishka passed away, I had him taxidermied. And that's him. You're standing next <laughs> to him. <laughs> I was, we looked that up. He, did he die a year after the show aired? Within the year, yeah, he took the money we had paid him. He was obese. Like people say that Donald Trump is obese, but I mean, he is actually, according to the term, yeah. what, what becomes obese and what isn't. But he was, ego was huge. So he took the money we paid him and he had one of those uh, gastric bypass operations. Oh, no way. You know, they're, well, no, they're, they're standard practice now, but yeah, he was back then, the early, yeah. one of the early people. And he didn't make it. It wasn't oh, successful. That's yeah. terrible. So, that is a horrible story. I, you, you'd think you that that his weight was kind of his bread and butter at that point, being on the show. But true. that's very funny. Bread and butter, weight. You know. <laughs> yeah. Well done. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's, no, it's, it's, it's a, sad, a sad that's thing. That's a sad I, story. I thought I thought the 130 shows in nine months is what killed. Yeah, him. you worked him to death. <laughs> I thought you worked him to death, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it was it was money that that took him down because he had enough money to go and have go that get the operation. surgery. Uh-huh. And if you guys didn't hire him, he wouldn't have had that money. So you killed and him, and he would have saved three hundred and fifty pounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. good point. <laughs> Anyways, Mitch, this was Mitch, awesome. Thank you. We're gonna have you back on. Can the you show. can you do like a more. little sign off for us, Mitch? Yeah, can, like can a can super you, hippie type, sup- uh, sup- like a little yeah. like you would do for the commercial before the commercial or anything, or Happy Halloween, anything for our fans. Yeah. Um, sure. Um, now? Sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, this is Mitch Markowitz. I'm co-producer and, and co-star of Hilarious House of Frankenstein. I love our fans, and I wish we could all get together, but under the cur- certain, but please keep on watching. We all have something in common. We're all big Frankenstein fans, and we're going to come and we're going to go, but Hilarious House of Frankenstein is going to go on forever. Yes, very my nice, man. Mitch. Thank my you man. so much. And, and Mitch, angels live in my town. Well, I'm going to come to your town because I'd love to live in a town where the angels come as opposed to the devil or other bad things like Well, that. today the devil's in the town. Today but the devil's in the town. I, I do whatever you have to do to watch this show because if every show is as interesting as this evening's was, I think you got to rock and roll with these guys on a regular basis. I mean, they know what they're doing. They give the guests room so that they can answer the questions and stretch a little here and stretch a little there. It's nice. I feel like I'm working with the pros from Dover. They, these guys have done it before, and they're going to be around forever. And who knows? This could be another uh, um, Lily Singh. You know, we started off as a as a YouTube hit. And she now has a show that follows Seth Meyers on NBC every night of the week. So I know, I know. <laughs> it's so nice to have the opportunity to work with the Wings World the podcast. There we oh, go. All right, you. my man, Mitch, oh, the Mitch. super hippie in the house. I love this man. I love this man. As far as I'm concerned, I'd like to stay in the house. You could add me to your full time crew. But unfortunately, I have a life to live and a wife that, <laughs> yeah. that requires my. Uh, you got, my you got Frank, you got Frankenstein money. You, yeah. you, you, you're not, you're, thir- you're not thirsty no more. We're on the up. We're on the come up. We're trying to. We're trying to get some of that. You know, syndicate money. We want that syndicate money. <laughs> yeah. Well, Got to keep practice, practice, yeah, practice. I agree. I agree. Thank you, you much. Where they say the steps to success, the elevator to success is out of order. You have to take the stairs <laughs> one yeah. step at a time. One step at a and time. This, Great advice. This is a big step you're doing right now with this show. It's it's very cool. I like the way you handle it. It's slick, it's professional, and yet it's homegrown. Thank you. Thank you, Mitch. I appreciate that. Much appreciated. That's cool. That's cool. Coming, nice coming, co- thanks, Mitch. Mitch. Coming from a legend from, like you, that that's actually warms our hearts so much. Thank you so much. Okay, guys. Take care. Thank you, Mitch. Thanks, Good Mitch. night. Thanks. I'll be in touch with you. 
Good working with you. Peace. Yes, thanks. Super happy. Ciao, ciao. See you, Mitch. Mitch fucking Markowitz. Markowitz. That good was money. Good guy, dude. What a good dude. Yeah. Buddy, that was great. Like, was happy, so happy Halloween. Halloween. Happy Halloween, everybody. To the fans. Thanks for joining us tonight. Awesome. Uh, uh, I would like to also thank Ben Bruin for the delicious brews tonight. This was excellent. Yep. Session Balls Buddy, Fall Session IPA. Bench. thank I you very much, guys. I never drink two beers during the podcast. No. Ever. Like, I might have one. I usually milk it because we're busy I, doing I stuff. I two plus one before the show. I stop drinking it's good. This. Good stuff. It's fantastic. Mitch fucking Markowitz. A hilarious house of Frightenstein. 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 Sorry, I always mispronounce it. Excellent show. The super hippie. Cool dude. Still kicking it and killing it. The Guy Big story was excellent. <laughs> he chose his name Guy Big. <laughs> That's excellent. Oh, and, and, man. That, and that Mike Myers stole that whole... Well, not stole, but, but so like, he inspired by that. Inspired by it. He said Jim Carrey. All those guys give him credit. It's amazing. Unbelievable. And, and, Mitch, and honestly, it was funny. Like Seeing Mitch now talking to him, it reminded me of Super Hippie back from the 70s. I mean, he hasn't changed all that he much. He still had that wig and everything. That's fucking awesome. That was Very so cool. much fun. Very Happy cool. Halloween, everybody. Happy Halloween, everybody. Fucking hell.